Welcome to What God Can Do Ministries. Um, just to let you know, um, I'm still in England. I never went to Houston. I don't know where the rumor came from, but usually it comes from liars who say I went to Houston and they don't know where I live. Well, I've always been in England. Um, and though I don't appreciate the weather at the moment, uh, it's good to be in my homeland. And I, I want to tell you something. So many Christians today are living in another land than the land God intended for them and the truth that God intended them to have. And I just want to encourage you this morning. Uh, so many people are being told, if you don't do this, you don't do that. You can end up in hell. Oh, you look, no Christian is going to go to hell. A born-again, spirit-filled believer will be kept by the power of God, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. That's you. If you're a true believer, born of God's spirit. And I just want to share some of the little secrets that um, Paul delivered to the saints in Ephesus. It's in chapter 1, and I want you to note it. Uh, I'll read it to you. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now I want you to notice, first of all, he was called of God as an apostle by the will of God. And he wrote to the saints that were at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and pure prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. My goodness me, God's done a lot. <laughs> He's done a lot for us, and it's quite plain in Scripture. It was his will, his perfect will. Our God loves us. He sent his Son to redeem us, and he shed his precious blood 2,000 years ago, taking the punishment and penalty for your sin and my sin. If so be, we believe in him, we are born of him, and we live in him. Now, I was in him before the foundation of the world. I hope you were too. I know that I was chosen and predestined according to his will. Um, what Jesus did when he died on Calvary, he believed and had faith in those who would be redeemed. And he set himself for the bride of Christ. Now please understand, so many people come to me and say, I made a decision for Christ. I sought God. I want to tell you, before you were even born, he made a plan before the foundation of the world he was the Lamb of God slain for your sin and my sin. He took everything that was necessary to bring true redemption. He shed his precious blood and on the th he was crucified, dead and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven and we're justified by his ascension. I preach Christ, the risen one. 
I realize right to Acts of the Apostles, the Apostles talk about the resurrection. I find so many churches today talk about the cross, they talk about misery, they talk, you know, that's J.N. Darby's stupidity. He founded the, the Brethren and the Exclusive Brethren and he did a lot of damage with his lies. And there are many people who come from Brethren churches who get into Pentecostal and Charismatic churches and think they have the truth. They're liars. I know the God who redeemed us before the foundation of the world. God's redemption plan was in his heart before creation. And we need to understand that. We have a wonderful God who loves us. Now there are vessels to honor and vessels to dishonor, but Paul here was writing to the saints of God, those who were faithful in Jesus Christ. And the reason they were faithful is because of God intervening in their lives. I've found so many people say, well, we must have responsibility. We do. What's our responsibility? To fulfill the will of God. Because he orders all things in the earth according to the counsel of his will. He controls everything in heaven on earth. I know there are people in the Christendom, one um, person who wrote, because he's so ignorant, that... Um, God has a hard time doing what he wants to do, but if Christians would pray enough, then God would have enough power to do what he wants to do. That is absurd. I, I want to tell you and assure you that um, your prayers and my prayers outside of the will of God will have no benefit at all. Um, I know that when you pray in the Spirit and agree with God's will, he will do it. But if you just think, you know, you've got a desire for this or a desire for that, in fact, if you think you're going to become a multimillionaire, I've got news for you. If you do, it'll destroy you, unless it's God's will. And I don't believe it's God's will. So many people rest the scriptures and they take things out of context and claim they can do great things for God. I had a dear young lady come round to see me. She wanted prayer. Uh, and one of the things she said was, God wants to enrich me so I can bless the church. It's rather like a young man I once met who was going to fill in the um, lotto forms or whatever they are. Um, I, I can't remember what they call them now. Um, but he, he, he had this idea that he promised God that if he won a million, a couple of million, and he did the football pools as well, he would give half of it to the work of God. Very generous. Uh, but he didn't win. Uh, it's a delusion. But many, many people suffer with the delusion that God merely came and bought life to us that we might be the most prosperous, the most um, egotistical. Look, God's not interested. Your Rolls Royce does not impress God, if you have one. Um, it doesn't. I meet many people who have called themselves apostles. Do you know in Acts 2, when it talks about people coming and laying everything at the apostles' feet, it was to give to the poor and to give to the widows and orphans and any man that had lack. It was not to give to the apostle so he could buy his next jet plane. That is delusion. And I find too many people have twisted the scriptures. I believe in one thing. The Lord God Almighty, he is a good God. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills and it takes faith to get some of it into your larder. But the thing you have to understand is God wants to bless us body, soul, and spirit. I hate poverty. I think it's wrong. But I hate this false thing that people are propagating uh, where people come to church because they think they can get rich. Pastors spend their time 
trying to pump money out of people. It's wrong. We're here to m meet people's needs and bring them into a revelation of a relationship with the living God, which is the only relationship that counts. Why try and accumulate wealth here? It's going to burn up with unquenchable fire. But where you're going, if you're a true Christian, why? The streets are paved with gold. So you're not going to be able to outlive it or outdo it. Let us believe our God, who before the foundation of the world redeemed us, and the devil can do nothing about it. Once God chooses you, once God sets his heart on you, he will keep you. The, the devil will struggle to try and assert himself as though he's true. But everything he says is lies. He's a liar from the beginning. He's the father of lies. There is no truth in him, says Jesus. Just read John 8 and 9, uh, the Gospel of John. Uh, you'll discover that he's a liar from the beginning. I meet people who consult with devils and demons they think that they can tell them, uh, you know, you, one dear old man um, have this concocted idea that you ask your devil his name. Now, a devil lies. He's the father of lies. And they think if you find out his name, you can cast him out. They read the, the um, what's it called? The tale of Rumpelstiltskin, I think. Uh, it's a load of nonsense. Look. The truth is this, Jesus Christ has already come, overcome all the power of the devil in heaven, on earth, under the earth. And he has all authority. God gave it to him. God the Father gave to Jesus Christ all authority. And we need to walk and live in that authority and simplicity, loving our God and fulfilling his will. May God open your heart to see, your mind to understand, and your real whole being to love the one who's redeemed you. God bless you. God keep you.